a Ghanaian scholar at one time said, if you educate a man, you educate an individual. But if you educate a woman, you'll have educated a nation. As we follow these girls and boys on their way to school, we find that a girl child in Busoga is faced with many challenges. Things like child marriage, defilement, and discrimination. A school like this is a mirror to society. The teachers here are able to tell what kind of community they live in through the actions or testimonies of these young ones. This child, when he comes to school, already first of all is traumatized from the situation that he has seen at their home. How uh, the mother was battered or how, by the way, fathers are also battered by their wives. Is but that, that being, being, being a man, you don't really bring it out because you are supposed to be ahead of the family. As this young man hoists the flag, this also raises the aspiration of the children in this school that they too can make it, despite the hurdles, as told in this poem. Let's be firm and fight child marriage. We are the voice of the crying girl child. Crying like nothing, but nobody can listen. There should be a shame in Uganda, Uganda, Uganda. The poem entitled Listen to the Voices of the Crying Child is on point. Who is listening to them? School is more than just sitting in class and doing arithmetic. The value system has to be worked upon right from home. Where some children are in school, others are in the rice fields, deployed to guard against birds and vermin during class time. But it is even worse for those who have stayed and only to end up getting defiled. For example, in a water-stressed area like this, girls have to trek long journeys to fetch water and spend long hours lining up at the boreholes and aware that evil men are lurking around ready to pounce. In this home, a young girl was defiled by a neighbor who was also the village LC1 chairman. The mother of the defiled girl here in Nawasagwa says the defiler confessed having committed the crime. <laughs> The father returns at home at mid-morning drunk, but despite his drunken stupor, you can see he's emotionally broken down by what happened. <laughs> He leads us to the crime scene. He claims he caught the man in the act as the daughter was wailing on the ground. The defiler was later arrested. Sometimes they come up to police, but eventually they will not follow up cases. They will tell you, uh, they are our relatives. We are seeing that they are duty bearers. Their skills have been enhanced to respond to GBV, which was not the case before. Because when if the survivors maybe went to police and they found this police officer who was not really informed about the GBV, they would handle the cases as the normal cases that come in at police. But with this other knowledge of GBV, at least the response is changing. And so we are proud that we are having those duty bearers who are really supporting with the GBV cases. Thanks to community activists like Samanya Wilberforce here in Kigarama, awareness is being created. Many come to seek his services and here he gets to know what is around. I've seen very many changes because after interacting with these people, one, they have changed. We are not do, dealing with GBV nowadays in our parish here. Second, when these families were, where they were doing with GBV, children were not going to school. But now I find these kids are going to school. In this book, he records all cases of gender-based violence and advises the victims where they can seek help. It is important to let girls be girls. Children should grow up as children playing, studying under the care of the elders. The saying by one American politician that it takes a village to raise a child should make meaning here in Busoga.